30. We'll call the meeting to order, North Reading School Committee. And the first item on our agenda is, as usual, is uh, public input. Is there any public input? Things not on our agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to a student report with Dan Madden, class of 17. Uh, thank you very much. Um, for those who don't know me, this is my first time coming here this year. My name is Dan Madden. I'm a senior here at North Reading High School. Uh, this is my second year serving as a student representative to the school committee, so just thank you for welcoming me. I'm looking forward to an exciting year. Um, and as my other senior is also student rep Jensen had mentioned last week, uh, there's a lot going on here at North Reading in a very busy fall. Um, starting with ath athletics, uh, football had beaten Pentucket this past Friday, 42-20, to which improved their record to 4-1 on the season. Uh, this was a great win for the boys, being this is an in that was an in-conference matchup. So they have been doing very well this year. Um, boys soccer, all fall sports, I should say, are doing well, but boys soccer uh, has been hovering just over 500, and I know they've had some unfortunate injuries that have occurred, but um, as boys, as our soccer program usually does, I'm sure they'll do quite well and hopefully make it onto the state tournament and uh, do very well once again. And girls soccer is just having another phenomenal year um, with just two losses on the books. Um, I believe they're 10 and 2, and the girls uh, continue to push, and hopefully we'll see a great run out of them out of the in the uh, state tournament. Um, golf, as the last time we checked, are 10 and 0, uh, currently in a match at uh, Hillview Country Club against Hamilton Wenham, uh, and they're undefeated on the year, which is absolutely great for the um, boys' golf team. Um, every year they've progressed, and this year it's just been awesome, uh, spearheaded by Logan Stansberry, Mike McCauley. Uh, and a few other seniors on that staff. So uh, field hockey is looking to bounce back after a few tough losses. Both them and volleyball have some crucial must-win games coming up that are uh, Cape Ann matchups. So hopefully with those wins, we can um, see a nice state tournament bid out of both of those teams. Uh, for, for academics, the PSAT will be administered this Saturday. Uh, this will be administered to sophomores and also juniors um, looking to take the SAT in further years. Uh, I know in years past with the PSAT that North Reading students have progressed uh, very well, and uh, hopefully uh, these students will help prepare them for the SAT. Um, especially this, I think, is the second year they will be administering the new SAT, um, which my grade had taken this past fall and winter. Uh, the SAT, uh, the October um, testing, will be released in two weeks. Uh, this SAT was, SAT was taken by a lot of seniors here at North Reading High School being this is one of the last SATs they will be able to take before um, college admissions, especially early action and early decisions. Um, so those will be released in, I believe, two weeks. Uh, college deadlines are really filling seniors' minds now. Um, for guidance, appointments have been booked throughout. Uh, and for senior students, um, the, close, the next admission deadline for early action and early decisions will be this October 15th, followed by November 1st, and then followed by November 15th. So if you ask any uh, senior student what's on their mind, I'm sure college deadlines will be the first one. Uh, MCAS scores also for the sophomore class. Uh, I'm not sure what the other classes I saw were released today. Um, I saw my sister can, you know, looking at those early on. Oh, very excited. Uh, another year of uh, great testing through uh, North Reading High School. Uh, and class rank was also released to seniors as well. Um, and also college visits to guidance have been underway for the past month or so. Um, these visits, I believe, continue throughout November with schools mostly from the Northeast. And I know have received a lot of interest today. We had UMass Amherst, which I'm sure got quite a crowd from North Reading students. Uh, on to fine arts, uh, student council has kicked off their October food drive. Uh, this food drive is a huge, um, huge event here for North Reading High School uh, is in each year we continue to exceed our goal. Um, last year, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but I think it was like 3,500 food items donated. Um, and this tends to be a great competition with students always looking to you know donate the most of the food pantry. And I know the food pantry is very um, thankful for the work we do here and it's all on behalf of the students. Uh, another uh, club activity on political so uh, North Reading High School Political Society, which is a club focus on uh, talking about the election, talking about local and state politics, uh, has been in touch with um, Massachusetts House uh, Minority Leader um, Brad Jones, who will be coming in to speak to uh, speak to the club. Uh, this is open to any student looking to learn a little bit about state legislature um, and any questions they might have for a local politician, which is great to see. 
For North Reading High School travel, 23 students have signed up to go on their European trip. They have currently six spots remaining, uh, which is awesome to see. They have, uh, I know in the past few years, especially my grade, this, this um, event has gained a lot of popularity. Um, and I believe this year they're traveling to Sweden, Norway, and a few other countries in Northern Europe. Uh, and lastly, Dancing with the Hornets with North Ring High School. Um, dance is underway, um, under competition. Uh, this is a big event for school pride and that the uh, North Ring High School dance team is looking forward to and draws a lot of uh, a big student crowd. And so it's, it's nice to see with uh, such a busy fall with academics, athletics, fine arts, uh, North Ring High School students continue to impress and um, I really, you know, st striving to make a good mark here at North Reading High School. Uh, so for the student report, that's all I have for today. Um, for a student uh, work example, so what I've been doing in my British literature class is we've been working on our college essays um, for the past few weeks now. Uh, many students have been submitting drafts of teachers to review uh, for the Common App prompts and um, other supplement essays. Uh, this one I have here, I, this is my second draft. I recently got a grade back with a rubric from my British literature teacher. Um, this essay was not for the Common App prompt, but the prompt, I'll pass it around right now, the prompt was uh, explain the community, neighborhood, and um, environment in which you were raised and how that has shaped you as a person. Uh, so that is for one of my colleges that I will be applying to in the next week or so, um, just talking about the environment in which I was raised and how it shaped me as a as a person. So if you'd like to take a look at that, and there's also a rubric attached to that with um, some North Reading core values for our English program. Anybody have anything more for Dan? Sorry, I kind of went off there. There's just a lot going on here. <laughs> Good thorough report, Dan. Keeps Thank you. us up to date. Thank you. <laughs> you in the transcript. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Thanks, Dan. Next uh, item on our agenda is the uh, MSBA SSBC update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So a few things to, um, to bring to your attention um, as of late. Um, you may have noticed that um, the, the um, installation of the two new sidewalks at the athletic fields um, has been completed for um, achieving handicapped access compliance. The, uh, the testing of the drain lineage, uh, drainage lines continues. Um, I am awaiting a plan to uh, remedy the associated issues with that. Have not received anything as of um, today, but testing was uh, continuing into uh, late last week. I would expect that you know, some sort of a plan from Gilbane Company would be forthcoming um, in the very short term. You might recall at the last um, SSBC meeting there was talk about the recommissioning of the boilers. Um, while no date has been set for that as of yet, um, there was a need for the as-built drawings to be provided, and I can tell you that those were um, submitted to Gilbane um, last week on October 4th. So again, because that seemed to be the last piece of remaining information needed for, for scheduling the recommissioning, I would expect that that, um, that date for the work would be coming um, relatively soon. Late last week, um, the landscaping contractor, Mon, uh, was back on site. They began with um, some work down at what, what's been commonly referred to as the Phase 4 site, the site of the former high school, the surrounding areas of the, um, of the new athletic fields and the, um, and the slope. Um, so that work began on Thursday and Friday of last week. I'm expecting that they will be um, here continuing their work this week. There is still an awful lot of work to be done, particularly with the, um, the replacement of, of um, shrubs and trees that um, have unfortunately have not survived um, the drought conditions of the summer. So again, I would expect that that, um, that, that work would continue into this, uh, this present week. And lastly, I would just call attention for the committee that um, the punch list items continue to be addressed. Um, Doran Whitty, I actually had written in my report to you um, when I submitted this to you on Friday that um, Doran Whitty was to be on site this week and next week. They actually did come out on Friday um, and began the back punching of the remaining lists um, on the punch list. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any comments? Mr. Webster. I'm going to restrain myself this week uh, except to say that um, my frustration grows. Um, and the contractors are not living up to <coughs> schedule and getting this project done on time. <clears throat> and then I will ask a question, uh, Mr. Bernard, and that is, uh, what's the status of the training for the AV training, which continues to be put off? Good question. Um, I sent an email to um, Austro yesterday, have not heard back. As you know, the date was set back about two weeks ago and they had to cancel. And that was the perfect answer because that's the answer to every question we ask of the contractors these days. We don't hear back and I'm getting tired of it. That's all. 
and I'll give my usual cautionary um, response to Mr. Webster's frustration, and that is they haven't been paid for all of this work that's Correct. being completed. So we are holding money. They won't get paid until they complete the work. Um, there has been some progress made down in, mm -hmm. uh, down in the area of the fields, um, but it's at their pace, and until they complete it, they won't get paid. So. Mr. Bernard, just a question. The AV yes. training was for the Performing Arts Center. The AV training, the, what's remaining is the Performing Arts Center, yes, and that's the question I asked as, as of for yesterday. Mm -hmm. We also have the gymnasium systems that, that remains, but no date had been set for that because we kind of, we're kind of we trying to phase it. So this room was first, right. the Distance Learning Lab, Performing Arts Center was due to be second, and the gymnasium was third. And I can see why we haven't gotten to it yet. It's only the third year we've been using the facility, so I can understand why we haven't been able to train yet on it. But if there's a training for the AV equipment for the gymnasium and we don't have cameras in there, how it's, are we? It's mostly there's a sound system. Oh. Just the, the sound, sound and there's, yeah. there's a multimedia. The there's, a, there's a portable um, projector, projector okay. unit, you know, something similar to something like okay. this in here, but it's on a cart that can be used as an instructional sure. tool. Okay. And, and the sound system, as Mr. Venezia said. I do, um, if I if I could, Mr. Chairman, just to, 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 to that question about um, the AV and the gym. So you might remember that um, Mr. Venezia and I met with NORCAM back um, several months ago. There, there has been some progress in that area to this extent. Um, we've had two contractors come out. The second one was here, um, I'm going to say last Thursday, and met with Dr. Daly and with me to kind of review with us, what we see as our kind of functional needs for the gym um, to be able to broadcast from there, you know, I'll say, you know, for the sake of discussion, basketball games, other events that go on in the gym. And I, I will say to you that I think the two contractors that, we, that we've had out, one of which is um, the gentleman that was on, was worked on part of this project, uh, Michael Ridinger is his name, um, have given us very good feedback and are putting together for us proposals around um, what we might be able to do to make better use of the studio tied into the gym. There seemed, you know, I think originally we were looking at what did we need to install in the gym to be able to say show a game at home or show an award ceremony or any event that goes on in the gym. And what we've come to discover, and I hope it kind of plays out, is that um, we, we have a lot of the equipment and a lot of the infrastructure exists um, through the construction of this building, but to be able to tie those um, systems together to be able to make them functional and kind of, you know, for lack of a better way to say, it, to talk to each other, remains to be remains to be seen. We just we need someone to that, you know, that's their expertise to inform us what we need to do to be able to do that. The good news is, is both contractors have expressed optimism around what we have for both the infrastructure and the available equipment that was part with was part of the overall project. So, I think it's fair to say, with all of that said, that. Um, I don't think we're very far off from getting kind of a comprehensive quote and proposal on what it's going to take in order to, to accomplish what we hope to accomplish to be able to, to broadcast from the gym. So um, I didn't have it on my report to you tonight, but since it kind of came up, I thought, you know, it's not something that has been forgotten or left us. It's just, you know, like a lot of things we're finding out, it just takes what seems to be um, sometimes a, an inordinate amount of time to get the answer. But, um, it, you know, we did have some some conversation and some action around it just as, as recent as last week. So. When we first talked about the, uh, the, the gym and, and putting camera there, uh, I looked at uh, extensively at the drawings and it seemed to me that uh, all of the wiring between the gym and the studio and the theater um, were all, all and here, were all tied together the the infrastructure is there in in conduits hmm. um, and I was um, uh, kind of surprised that you know we weren't able to get that message across to um, NORCAM uh, to uh -huh. make that connection so um, because it, it it seemed that all of it was there we didn't have cameras we didn't have cameras on the sides of the mm. of the performing arts center but we had all of the connections available. Uh, the connections uh, originally terminated in a box on the floor mm -hmm. in front of the stands. Uh, I think the original thought was that the camera would be located either at the floor or 
slightly up in the stands and we connect. Well, I think it, in, in the gym, if you look in the gym and you look behind the grandstands, there's a connection up there all the right, way. Right, right. That was a modification. That and was, yeah. that, I think, would be a panoramic type camera yeah. that I think would cover the entire gymnasium. Yeah. The infrastructure is in the gym, but for possibly running the wire up through the, the conduit well, to, to the, the conduit camera. To that camera. And installing the camera. So I don't think that's a problem. It's just a problem of getting the money to, to put the panoramic camera in there. Um, I think there's a a little bit more that has to be done in the Performing Arts Center as far as the infrastructure. I think there are, there's two things. You know, if you if you want to go live, um, the ideal is to have the robo robotic cameras in either the gym or the or the uh, um, Performing Arts Center. But um, if we can tie it into our studio, we can the, and, and we have the cameras. You can then, you know, it's right. it's saved at either on a hard drive or however right. it's saved right. um, in the studio, and then. You know, nor can we'd have to work with, but then we or might have the material just to hand to them. You know, here's right. a basketball game. Here's to the edit and graphics yeah. and so right. that's and that's what we came to learn from the. When I say we, Patrick Daly and I, we came to learn with the two contractors is the the pan tilt zoom camera, the kind of the fixed camera. I think Jerry, we talked about that yeah. when you were here that day. I think that's a recommended kind of add-on, but they they've also convinced me that. The equipment we have with the tripod type cameras really is the way you want to go. That there are more, you get more of that action type shot yeah. exactly, and that you know exactly. So you'd have to set up on a spot in the bleachers so this, somewhere. There's, well, there's actually four, um, I'll call them like stations. If you go in the gym, you'll see what I'm talking about. Right? There's just four of these kind of gray wall mounted, well, right. flush mounted boxes, and there's right. all you know kind of the, the the ports and there's four of them throughout the gym and those connect directly to the studio? well that's what we're trying to determine like uh, you know my belief is that they connect something we just where that's the thing we're trying to navigate is to what degree do they and and how functional is that and what might we need to do to add on to that to make it as functional as we want and and we also I think now that we have you know we have a video production course that's offered at the high school we've started with the middle school we're, so we're hoping to build that kind of student population if you will that can do the work in the studio, which would be ideal. I mean, yeah. if we, they were to tape something at night, you go into the studio for class, that's where the editing kind of goes on, and, and then ultimately it goes out for broadcast with Norcam, as I think ultimately what we would like to achieve. Right. So. so I guess my, my, my co final comment to you on it, unless you have other questions, is just that, you know, we're continuing to, to have people out to help us to try to, you know, determine what it is we need to do, so. I just have a comment. It's a little ridiculous that we have to now look out to other contractors for proposals to figure out the infrastructure that we have. I was just going to say the same thing. Shouldn't it's, someone it's have told so us? It's so ridiculous. We haven't paid anyone, which is a good thing. No. No, but the fact that we have to go through this time and effort to get someone in here to I would help us understand we, what's here. I would prefer that we not have to do that, but it was, I think, it's a, it's it was a by virtue of just, route yeah, to exactly. Travel. It's just, I want to get it done. We found that in a number of areas yeah. to do things ourselves. Well, like with this field project, the same yeah. thing. It, un so. Unfortunately, one of the subs to a sub to a sub mm -hmm. on the electrical yeah. contractor right. um, was, uh, was uh, it didn't didn't follow through very well. Correct. And uh, you know, I'm I'm not an electronics engineer, <laughs> but uh, I, I do read drawings pretty well and uh, follow legends and so forth. I didn't have the specification, but it looked to me like we had a, a, a pretty complete package mm -hmm. if we just knew how to use it. Right. Uh, unfortunately, the people who put it in disappeared early on, and somebody else came in to replace them, and they were doing catch up. So, anything else? All right, next item on our agenda is a uh, presentation. I uh, miss uh, Amy Lukwitz, Youth Services Director. Did you see on the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yes, there is PowerPoint. everybody. I am um, very, very happy to be here to um, give you a very brief overview of our Drug-Free Communities Grant. And uh, this is something that we 
in the community impact team have been working on now for two years. Um, just to give you a very brief overview, uh, we have submitted for this grant two years ago and uh, we were denied the grant. We um, <clears throat> scored a 79 and the way the grant is awarded is they fund all everybody who scored 100 and everybody who scored 99 until the pot of money is gone. And so a 79 just did not cut it. However, uh, about a month and a half ago, we got the email that we received the grant this year after resubmitting and um, strengthening our proposal. So I'm here to give you a brief overview um, of what that entails and uh, give you some time to ask some questions. So first, why did we want to apply? Um, it's important to note that this grant does not just address substance use. It also addresses perception of harm. And this grant is really focused on perception. Um, we're not prepared tonight to talk about local statistics, but we're working on collecting that information within the next three months on our timeline. However, I can say that North Reading is on trend with the 2013 um, national statistics that you see up there. So the first thing I want to mention is that we were required to set two goals by the grant. We actually decided to set three. And I want to note that these are goals for year one only. This grant is a five-year grant. Um, we will have the option at the end of the five years to apply for another five years, totaling $1.25 million. Um, so it's $125,000 a year. So the first goal includes increasing the strength, durability, capability, and capability of the existing coalition. Uh, there's less focus on growth and more focus on capacity building, and that's intentional for the first year. We want to make sure we have a strong coalition to do the work. The second goal, specifically in the air, is uh, to specify reduction in the areas of marijuana and prescription drug use, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, these were our two identified substances required by the grant. We'll also have to report on alcohol and tobacco use, but I want to explain that we uh, used our data that was existing to select marijuana and prescription drug use. And this was highly based on North Reading statistics, also on post-arrest interviews, where those who, um, those young adults, uh, not teenagers, but young adults who are being arrested for um, heroin distribution, for prescription drug distribution, report marijuana and prescription drugs being gateway drugs for them. So we wanted to make sure that we had tackled that, because keep in mind, this is a prevention um, grant. We do not delve into treatment, and we do not uh, delve into adult anything. It's for 18 and under. The third goal, um, although we had data to report for the grant, we recognized that this was an area of opportunity for us to improve on and why I'm not ready to release the North Reading specific information tonight. We'll look at collaboration uh, with the North Reading Public Schools, the fire department, police department, and even hospitals to work on this area in a science-based format to collect quantifiable data. I will note that we uh, were very strong in our qualitative data though. So how are we going to do it? Required by the grant, we were required to address the seven strategies of community change. And I'm just going to give you one example of that. And that is under changing the physical design. This is the one I get questions about the most. Um, changing a physical design could mean anything from putting up a fence to a, a high traffic area. Um, in our case, we identified Ipswich River Park, the back pass, and even the front areas that are pretty visible as locations not only for um, drug dealing but also use so for our grant um, our grant overview budget uh, budget excuse me you'll see a fourteen thousand dollar line item there under equipment and that is because we are going to install um, 12 uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 video cameras with a live feed to the pol police station so that's an example of a physical change that we're looking to make um, I also want to address the request uh, the, the non-federal match there we were required to match that dollar for dollar. And that could be anything from my salary, a portion of Mr. Bernard's salary, a portion of the um, police detectives, the police chief, in order to make up that money. And so the only cash that the t uh, town is going to invest is $14,000 because that uh, video camera project is going to be a $28,000 price tag. So that's the only cash that we have in. I'll also note that this is, again, year one only. So moving forward, we're hoping to not have any cash uh, invested. It'll just be portions of salaries and also benefits. I'm thrilled to let you know that uh, our biggest item there is actually in, in salary. We are going to hire a full-time person to just work on substance use prevention for our young people. That's huge. Um, it's going to be uh, including benefits. And I'm happy to let you know that we are starting our first round of interviews on Friday. Mr. Bernard has been invited to be a part of that. Um, we received 20 applications so far. 
Um, our first round of interviews is going to be about six people and go from there, see if we have um, additional coming in. Uh, ideally, this will be somebody with a master's level or above, but uh, even more ideally, we would like to have somebody with substance prevention work um, in hand. You're also going to see a large uh, line item for travel, and that's because during year one of the grant, and again, year one only, we are going to have to travel a lot. We have to do about four weeks of travel, and that's for our own training, along with coordination with other coalitions across the country. This is a national project. Um, the first one is actually the first weekend of December, long weekend of December. So um, it's not just for travel for myself or the coordinator. We're going to have opportunities for educators to travel. We're going to have opportunities for um, police officers to travel with us and youth to travel with us, which I'm really excited. There's actually a whole teen conference that we will fully pay for students to go with us. And I'm very excited about that. Let's see. Uh, just one more note about the future match. So I mentioned that we had to match it 100% for year uh, one through six, actually. But then you'll see an increase here for year seven, eight, nine, and 10. If we get the extension on the grant, we'll have to match it a little bit more. And again, I'm hoping that is no cash investment. So just to give you a note here about our short-term timeline, I mentioned that we have our first round of interviews on Friday. That'll be for the full-time uh, project coordinator position. I also have a stipend position for a high school student and that is for a, a social media coordinator. We feel like messaging coming from a student will be better. That person, uh, that student who will be hired will receive a small, unfortunate, small stipend to work uh, with us during the year and the expectation is to post about once a week so it's very low time. But that person will be responsible for sharing other coalitions information and making sure that we're in alignment with the national campaign. So how did we do compared to others? Um, I want to uh, mention that Middlesex County um, has already funded grants, and those include Wakefield, Reading, Waltham, Ashland, Wayland, and Arlington. Um, and this county stat is actually very important because according to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, our county has held the record for overdose deaths in the state every year since the year 2000. So it's very important that we are part of this coalition. It's very important that we're part of this funding. Um, and I will show you where some of the other coalitions were awarded for this year. So we are one of 698 funded coalitions this year. There was a total budget of 625,000, I'm sorry, awarded, we got 625,000 out of just under 90 million. So uh, you can see a heavy emphasis on the East Coast there and that's because of the heroin epidemic in our area specifically. Some communities, specifically in the South, might be dealing with meth. Uh, more, but our area is uh, going through quite a time right now with opioid um, overdoses. So this is kind of the standard thank you page, but for me it's really the most important um, slide on there. You're going to see on there collaboration from across many different departments for the town, volunteers. Um, I want to thank former Superintendent Willis who helped me write the first grant. Mr. Bernard, publicly I would like to thank you. For all of your help, Mr. Bernard helped heavily with not just data collection, but editing our grant, making sure that we had the best possible going forward. You'll also see some educators up there. Claudia Brown was uh, a great support to me. Some of these people just might have given me a high five or brought me a coffee, but it's really important um, to acknowledge that they all had a role in this, and we worked collaboratively on this grant proposal. Did anybody have any questions? I did. You talked about um, data collection. Um, so will you be using some of the existing surveys that we do? Are there going to be more surveys that the students have to participate in? And what about the privacy, protection of privacy, et cetera? Yep. Um, let me address that first. There's always an opt-out. Okay. Always an opt-out. Um, no names are ever given in any of the data that we require. So um, the required part, let me talk about that first. We have to answer four questions about four substances. And those questions are, um, what do you think your perception of risk is? What do you think your parents think about it? What do you think your friends think about it? And your past 30 day actual use. So those are four questions about four substances. Uh, we, re we got that information last year, if you recall, the um, committee approved that survey and uh, we'll be looking to expand it. Mr. Bernard has some ideas on how to best collect that information, including the breakdown by grade. I'm sure you understand there's a huge difference between grade nine and 12 and what that might look like. So we wanna make sure we capture that. Um, in terms of additional surveys, I don't anticipate that. If anything, I'd be very curious about parents' perception, to be honest with you. 
Um, the youth risk behavior survey, though, and I know Mr. Bernard wants to talk about this, it's been a struggle getting that information from the state. Um, he has made phone calls. I have made phone calls. I wish we had more access to that, and I'm not entirely sure why we don't. That'll be definitely an area of um, opportunity, and I, for certain, am anticipating some meetings specifically on data collection and how to make sure that we're not over-surveying the population. There's also going to be a challenge about capturing the population that doesn't attend public schools. Are we going to be able to do that at all? So those are some questions we need to work together on. I think fortunately, I mean, we have a pretty small percentage um, attending private schools, and especially with the new school, we're almost losing no students from eighth grade to ninth. That's great. Um, and, and alcohol is one of the four substances. It is. Okay. Alcohol, tobacco, and I will mention that uh, the trend for tobacco use nationally is going down, which is great. That is concurrent in North Reading. Um, so alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, and prescription drugs. That's going to be included in the tobacco questions for um, the youth risk behavior survey. It currently is not in our 16 question survey, but we need to address that because it's technically not tobacco. It's nicotine. Right. So I'm frightfully curious about that. Uh, we also hope to engage SAD in this collection process and see if they can help out. You know, we want as much student participation as we possibly can get in this. Any questions? Any other? Great. Thank you very much. Sure. May I leave with an invitation? Yes. So we are, many of you have attended our In Plain Sight event that is going on um, again for our second round. It's at North Reading Town Hall, room 10. And if you've been before, this year we added a car. So you'll get to do an In Plain Sight vehicle, and the police will show you um, some of the red flags that they see when they pull over vehicles. Um, it's going on right now, so i got to scoot and actually meet those guys. But um, tomorrow, 7.30 to 10.30, or tomorrow, five to seven, in the same hours on Thursday. So we're going to host a couple more, um, couple more days. We've had ten people that I know of go through today, and this is on top of over a hundred that went through the last time. So please come by, okay. Mr. Chairman. I, ju I just want to. <clears throat> I've had the good fortune of, of getting to know Amy the last few years since she's come to work in North Reading, and this, um, the attainment of this grant is huge for this community. And I want to thank her for her. Um, for her passion and her diligence. We have a lot of work ahead of us now that we yeah. have received this grant, but it's, all, it's for all the right reasons that I'm very excited to, um, to be able to continue to work with Amy and, and the Community Impact Team. I think this is a wonderful, a wonderful opportunity for us to really combat um, a problem that I think we've long been concerned about and really haven't had the resources mm -hmm. to, to combat appropriately. So this is, this is something to, I think that's you know, a really a, a real win for this community. And I thank Amy for, for her work on attaining the grant. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. All right. The, uh, the next item on our agenda is a presentation by uh, uh, Mr. Thomas Leston, an Eagle Scout project proposal. That's another. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. There's another problem. Tommy, you want to use this mic. It's, you won't hear it, though. It's just for TV. Uh, thank you. My name's Tom Lasden. I'm a senior here at North Reading High School, and I'm a Life Scout in Troop 750 who's trying to get my Eagle Scout this fall. Uh, my basic idea for my project is I'd like to build a sign to advertise school events. Uh, it would be mainly for the Performing Arts Department. Uh, I basically put that in to make sure they get included in a lot of this space, but anyone would be able to use the sign. Um, basically it would be made out of lumber, uh, a bulletin board and some plexiglass. I would have a block on it so it can't be vandalized even though that's not really a problem in our town. Just looking ahead. And it would be in the lower parking lot by the athletic fields. Uh, this is how Reading High School does their advertisements. It's a very nice looking sign in a well-traveled area. So that inspired me to build a sign for our town. Uh, my sign would be a different design as it would be made to walk up to instead of driving past. Uh, this is a sign at Clark Park in North Reading. Uh, it's a nice looking walk up sign in our town and my sign would look a lot like this. 
um, this and this uh, pictures I found online that I thought helped get the idea through. Uh, project design. So it's going to sit on two 4x4 four four posts and have a frame of 2x4s. And then on the back it would have a piece of plywood that supports a bulletin board where you could post flyers. So one of the things I liked about the design is that it's very easy to modify what's on the sign. All you have to do is take one flyer down and put the next one up instead of having to spend time to get signs made professionally. Um, a pane of plexiglass to protect the flyers and keep it waterproof. And a, that should say shingle, not plywood. It will have a shingle roof to help with waterproofing. Uh, I'll also put a solar powered light at the base of the sign to light it up at night and again it will lock. Uh, this is kind of the location. I couldn't get a picture that did it justice, but it's down at the lower parking lot and the way the sidewalk is built, you will not be able to walk from the lower parking lot to the turf field without either turning or walking into the sign. And so I like that because it will be very high traveled and lots of people will see it. Uh, this is a list of materials and estimated cost. Uh, I ran these numbers a year or two ago when I first designed the project and I'm thinking they're still probably accurate and that cost will be offset by different fundraisers and by asking for donations from lumber companies and uh, families in the troop. Um, that's the basic presentation. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, so we're, in terms of location, are you thinking of having it face so if you drive up, if you're driving up or down the road, you'll see it or will it be more facing? Uh, like how, how do you see it facing when it's um, completed? It will be facing the lower parking lot so that if you're in the lower parking lot, you'll see it when you drive in that first entrance. Oh, okay. And if you're walking from the lower parking lot to the turf field, uh, the athletic fields on the other side, you'll basically walk into the sign if you're not careful. Okay. So I want to make sure we get the highest um, traffic for it. And I really, yeah. I really like the idea of the solar light because we get a lot of traffic at night, you know, as football games and whatever else goes on around here. That's a great idea. What's the schedule time? Uh, so. I don't need to finish till I'm 18, which is in July, but I hope to finish this fall so I can put it on college applications. <laughs> I was gonna tell you to hurry up, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Just one question. Have you had an opportunity to speak with our buildings and grounds? Uh, yes, I have. To make sure that this is an okay location and perfect. Uh, I have. The one thing I need to do is call DigSafe and talk to the mm -hmm. building inspector. Uh, I believe there's a procedure for calling DigSafe, but I need to look into it more. As for the building inspector, I need a stamp from an engineer, which I'm currently working on getting. Do you mind if I just, if I could add to that? So just by way of background, Tom has done a very nice job. <clears throat> the last few weeks, he, he, I think his first meeting was with the high school principal, Mr. LaPrade. Yes. He then, he then scheduled a meeting with me. We had a very good meeting. I put him in touch with Wayne Hardaker. I mean, we've had the good fortune of other students coming uh, to us in the past with Eagle Scout Project proposals, and, and Wayne has been um, heavily involved because they've often been, you know, the scoreboard. We had the courtyard at the, at the old middle school that was done mm -hmm. several years ago. Um, Wayne, I think Tom, would you agree, was very helpful yes. to you. He, he put him in touch with the building, put Tom in touch with the building inspector. So there's a process that I think we've come to observe. And I thought, I thought it would be nice for the community and for the committee to hear Tom's uh, proposal, because I thought he did a very nice, thoughtful job in putting it together. And I think it's a nice opportunity for, for us to be able to um, advertise some of the important things that go on. Um, we met a week ago Friday. Down at the parking lot? I Was believe so. Friday, we met in, in, down at the parking lot, and it's, if you can picture the, the large electrical box that's there now, 
we kind of think that area to the right, again, once DigSafe approves, is Tom mentioned about the first entrance into the parking lot, but I think it's almost like you almost have to walk close to it to get to the field if you stay on the side. You do. It seems like a high visibility area, but I thought he did a very nice job with his meeting with me and, um, you know, nice job tonight too, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially since you're so close to that electric. Yeah, box. yes. I just want to make sure it gets that because it, it sounds like a great idea and it looks great. And I think it's great that even though it won't be 100% dedicated to have something that, um, you know, the maskers and, you know, the middle school theater pro program yeah. can, that will be almost dedicated to them and then people know to look there to see what's going on. Right. But I want to make sure we get. It's, it's going to really be nice looking, so it gets the most visibility. Mm. So that sounds like a good spot we have right there. But if someone comes up with a better one. That, that ready sign is right on Route 28. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. see that all the time. Right. I'd just like to add a little bit. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know how much people in general know about the Eagle Scout program, but it's a real accomplishment. Yep. It's not a trivial step along the way. It's an awful lot of work to get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations on getting this this far. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. check yes and I'll email you that information. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. I guess we can move along. Yes. Uh, the next uh, item on our agenda is the first reading of policy IDBB teaching and intervention alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. Mr. Webster. Uh, yes, so we met, uh, Janine and I met with Mr. Bernard two weeks ago, and uh, this actually ties in nicely with Amy Lukowitz being here tonight. What we actually have is a revised policy related to our instructional program. Um, teaching intervention, al intervention, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. And then we also have a new policy. It, it turns out that this has always been part of the student behavior, student discipline um, handbook and policy, but we never had a separate policy strictly prohibiting the use of alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. It was part of another policy. So um, Mr. Bernard um, felt, and, and we agreed, that we really should call this out and have a separate policy that says you will not use, et cetera, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. The other thing I would ask, and it's up to you guys, neither of these is long, but since um, one of them is a new policy and the other one is, is fairly significantly revised that we read both of these, especially given the importance of this issue um, in our community and other communities around the state. So I'd like to request that we read both of these for first unless reading. There's no, unless there's a major objection. Uh, I've always enjoyed objection? listening to Mel read policies, and <laughs> since we haven't been doing it, it's been a little bit of a I love reading, too. I know. Can I read these, Janine? I was going to offer to do a little one, but you okay. can take it. Well, whatever anybody said, right. I'm going to overrule it. Right. Mr. Webster, will you read the policy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the first policy is, I believe, IDBB which is Instructional Program Teaching and Intervention Alcohol, Tobacco, and Drugs. The North Reading Public School District is committed to maintaining a safe and supportive learning environment. The district views families as essential partners in its effort to prevent substance abuse. In accordance with state and federal law, the North Reading Public Schools shall provide an age-appropriate, developmentally appropriate, culturally competent, evidence-based alcohol, tobacco, and drug prevention education program in grades K through 12. The Alcohol, Tobacco, and Drug Prevention Program shall address the legal, social, and health consequences of alcohol, tobacco, and drug use with emphasis on non-use by school-aged children. The program also shall include information about effective techniques and skill development for delaying and abstaining from using, as well as skills for addressing peer pressure to use alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. The objectives of this program, as stated below, are rooted in the committee's belief that prevention requires education and that the most important aspect of the policies and guidelines of the district should be the education of children and youth on healthy decision making to prevent delay and to reduce alcohol, tobacco, and drug use, to increase students' understanding of the legal, social, and health consequences of alcohol, tobacco, and drug use, to teach students self-management skills, social skills, negotiation skills, and refusal skills that will help them to make healthy decisions to avoid alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. The curriculum, instructional materials, and outcomes used in this program shall be recommended by the superintendent and approved by the school committee. 
In addition, the North Reading Public Schools will implement intervention strategies, which may include staff training and or parent guardian education with a goal of identifying and meeting the needs of students most, most at risk while maintaining their confidentiality. The North Reading Public Schools will establish and make available to students, families, and staff a resource list of drug alcohol prevention and treatment services available through community agencies and organizations. Also, as part of this intervention program, the district will implement effective reintegration procedures to assist students who have been absent and or in recovery. This policy, policy shall be posted on the district's website and notice shall be provided to all students and parents in accordance with state law. Additionally, the district shall file a copy of this policy with DESE in accordance with law in a manner requested by DESE. This policy will be subject to periodic review every three years or earlier when appropriate. Um, I also want to um, mention that we asked Mr. Bernard um, and he can probably go into a little more detail. A lot, of this, a lot of this is already in place now through either health class or other classes, but I think there, there will be other um, aspects added to the program, correct? There, are, there is. So the, you might remember that this all stems from a recent law enacted last spring by Governor Baker. And so the guidance came down from the Department of Education. We're still awaiting additional guidance by the Department of Public Health, but I think this gives us a good framework for now. It's likely that I'll be asking the policy subcommittee to bring this back um, to the school committee at a later time once that guidance comes out. But essentially what this does, I think, is um, in a sense codify what I think does go on right now um, in terms of drug and alcohol education programs. But I think it, it, it puts a little more teeth into the fact that you know, we, we should have something more comprehensive, grades kindergarten through grade 12. And I think that's the spirit. That's probably the most important thing, as I read, that comes out of this policy, which, by the way, was, um, was written by Tom Nuttall, who is um, the attorney that works for us on special education issues. This is an area where he's um, become very informed. And so I shared with him the guidance when it came out, and he crafted this for kind of a North Reading specific policy. So what, what were the changes? Well, the, if you look at the second page, uh, that's the policy used to be. It was two I see. tiny paragraphs. I see, okay. So All we right. had no detail. Um, Correct. Basically right. just said we'll, we'll educate students. But well, what's interesting is this policy originated in 1970. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's what's it, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, December 7th, 1970 yeah. was the first uh, policy. Was so so the years. policy is essentially promising that we are going to be investigating Trying out adopting of some sort of evidence-based exactly. program K yeah. to 12. <clears throat> right, and as okay. Mr. Webster said at the outset, I think this grant work, you know, well, that Amy just spoke about is a nice tie-in yes. for us. I can't wait till second reading. <laughs> so so I, I actually was going to ask to put this on as a continued business item for for, for next Monday night, because I want to get this. Okay. I, I want to get this filed, posted, and disseminated. Yeah, okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. So I'm, I'm mo I'll move to approve uh, revised policy IDBB, teaching and intervention, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs for first reading. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. The second one, as I said, is that it's been part of another policy, and I think part of the student handbook, but we're now going to call out a separate policy, policy JCE. Um, it's under the cat heading rights and responsibilities slash student behavior, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use by students prohibited. A student shall not, regardless of the quantity, use or consume, possess, buy or sell, or give away any beverage containing alcohol, any tobacco product, including vapor, e-cigarettes, marijuana, steroids, or any controlled substance. The school committee prohibits the use or consumption by students of alcohol, tobacco products, or drugs on school property or at any school function. Additionally, any student who is under the influence of drugs or alcoholic beverages prior to or during attendance at or participation in a school-sponsored activity will be barred from the activity and may be subject to disciplinary action. This policy shall be posted on the district's website and notice shall be provided to all students and parents of this policy in accordance with state law. <coughs> Additionally, the district shall file a copy of this policy with DESE in accordance with the law in a manner requested by DESE. And That's thanks right. for moving right along on that since it was the next item on our agenda. I think, <laughs> oh, I, I thought they were in this. Well, look at that. You do need, I saved you some work. It's automatic. It's wonderful. And it's, uh, as I said, it's pretty straightforward. I don't know if there's. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve uh, for first reading new policy JCE, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use by students prohibited. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Unanimous. Sorry, Mr. Chair, for moving ahead like that. I always had self-control problems when I was in the early grades in my life, so. We've noticed that. <laughs> it hasn't gone away. <laughs> Sometimes we appreciate it. Never grown out of it. I know it's terrible. Next item on our agenda is a presentation of uh, North Reading Public Schools uh, 2021, a strategy for the future. One year update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm, I'm happy to share with you um, and the community kind of an initial update to NRPS 2021, our, our new strategic plan. So just by way of introduction, I'll just remind um, folks, if I could, that we, I think we in North Reading have come to really appreciate the value of strategic planning. And our, our initial five-year strategic plan um, that was conceived under um, the prior superintendent, Kathy Willis, along with the administrative council and the district as a whole, um, adopted NRPS 2016. And I, I think it's fair to say that that five-year strategic plan um, served this community well, served this school district well um, in really laying out and charting for us a course for, for, um, for future success. When I became the superintendent in 2014, um, very early on in that, in that tenure, I uh, convened the administrative council, worked with the school committee, of course, and, and also the, um, the faculty and staff at large to begin the work for um, laying out a successor strategic five-year strategic plan, and that is NRPS 2021, which really kicks off with this, um, with this school year, the 2016-17 school year. It might seem a little unusual that I'm coming to you tonight with an update, but um, I think it's important that as we transitioned from NRPS 2016, um, as we adopted the fiscal year 2017 budget, and, when, and as the Administrative Council came together over the summer and kind of refocused its, um, itself on, on NRPS 2021, that there were some things that we thought were important to share um, and some updates that we made, albeit they are um, not all that significant because the, the plan is really just beginning. So I'd like to just take a few moments to kind of walk you through this PowerPoint presentation for the benefit of the committee and the community to kind of just chart where, um, where the district is hoping to go um, in its inaugural year of NRPS 2021. The first couple of slides to the presentation I think you've all seen before. I, just, I think they're good to include in our annual update <clears throat> as reminders that you know, the work that we do, um, central to what we do, is around the instructional core. And that is what you see on the slide here is kind of the integration of the teachers and students around the academic content. The, um, the instructional core being defined of what goes on in classrooms each and every day. I have the little graphic here for, um, for the textbook strategy in action, which I know you have all heard um, about previously as it served as kind of the blueprint for us laying out our strategic plan and our PS 2016. Um, and it continues to be the blueprint um, for the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents in, um, in strategic plan design. Um, again, just again for, for, for um, edification, reminder to people about the vision and mission of our school district, kind of the vision we define as our kind of bumper sticker slogan of what we think we represent as a school district, and here is ours uh, on the screen, that the North Reading Public Schools prepares all students to be productive citizens who thrive in the 20, 21st century, our overarching vision. The mission is a little bit more detailed. It has not changed um, in recent years, although we for a long time did not have a succinct mission. And again, a lot of good work was done um, in just the last few years as the administrative council and the faculty and staff and the school committee came together around the adoption of this mission, that the North Reading Public Schools provides a safe, supportive, and contemporary learning environment where dedication to excellence, service, and lifelong learning is paramount. All students are challenged to work collaboratively and to re become creative and critical thinkers. Emphasis is placed on mastering core academic knowledge, developing 21st century skills, pursuing individual potential, and fostering citizenship in a global society. As we look at um, NRPS 2021, I would just like to um, call out for you that um, when the work began around the framing of this document, this very important document, um, Ultimately, we identified what we call seven strategic objectives that serve to define where we want to be as a school district by the end of the plans and, um, coming together. So at the end of five years, in, in the year 2021, we would hope that these strategic objectives would be the, 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 the kind of the, the, the charting of the course, if you will. And what we did with each of those objectives is we linked them. It made sense to the teacher and administrator standards for the new educator evaluation system. As our educator evaluation system has evolved, um, we found it 
increasingly important that in order to get the buy-in that was necessary across the school district, it only made sense that our strategic, strategic objectives would be closely linked to those uh, rubrics of the teacher and the administrators under the new educator evaluation system. And in just a moment, I'm going to go through for you what those seven strategic objectives are. They fall under three major category areas, what we call strategy areas, teaching and learning, technology integration, and student support services. The graphic shows kind of the big rocks, and again, I know the committee has heard that term before, but these are the kind of the, the big items that we fit into the jar, and then the sand and the smaller pebbles that surround them in the jar are, are the kind of the initiatives that we undertake in order to achieve our strategic ob objectives. Just kind of a little bit of a visual for you. So what are the strategic objectives under the three strategies? And again, I would just remind you that the three, three strategies are teaching and learning, technology integration, and student support services. So there are two under the teaching and learning strategy, <clears throat> and they're on the screen here for you. Um, to ensure that the district's K-12 curriculum is vertically and horizontally aligned to the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks and the Common Core State standards as applicable, and also to attain instructional core initiatives by number one, hiring and retaining highly qualified educators, number two, providing professional development opportunities to explore best practices in curriculum instruction and assessment, Number three, to utilize multiple sources of data as a means of improving student achievement and enhancing student learning. And number four, supporting the responsible integration of technology for enhanced instruction and student learning. Under the technology integration strategy, again, we have two, ensuring that digital learning is effective across the school district and enhancing the technology infrastructure and support system in the district. And then finally, under the student support services, there are three, this bringing our total to seven strategic objectives. Under student support services, to ensure that all students have access to a high quality, free and appropriate education, to implement and monitor a consistent instructional process that focuses on student learning to measure individual student progress within the curriculum, and to evaluate safety protocols throughout the district and implement a safety plan that provides the safest and most secure environment for everyone in the school community. The next slide is intended to represent for you the kind of the synergy, if you will, among all of the uh, constituencies that have goals defined for them. So the school committee um, does good work to adopt its goals, and we just did that um, very recently as you worked on those through two workshops in the summer. Um, our schools each have very active school councils that work diligently to create, I think, very thoughtful and comprehensive school improvement plans, and the goals within those also strive to re reflect NRPS 2021. The budget goals that the school committee adopts are reflective of NRPS 2021. And again, I think we've evolved as the educator evaluation system has evolved with tying our strategic plan to the goals of our educators, teachers and administrators. The ultimate, um, the end all, if you will, the goal for all of this is to elevate student achievement. As I think the committee is, is well aware, and perhaps much of the community is, um, each summer the Administrative Council comes together um, for a two-day retreat, and um, that was the case this past July when all of the administrators um, met for two days, kind of focused down off campus, and, um, and really uh, among a number of initiatives over the course of those two full days, uh, one of the things that we did was work on um, refining uh, NRPS 2021. <clears throat> for the teaching and learning strategy, I, I think what we saw as a need of kind of an adjustment, and again, just kind of calling out as focus areas for us in year one, was the vertical and horizontal alignment of the curriculum. Something that's not unfamiliar to you, we, we've had this for a number of years, is, is to seek additional support and curriculum leadership. We um, very proudly worked um, with the North Reading Education Association, the administrative team did, to um, to adopt a collect, uh, an, an, an amendment to the collective bargaining agreement, and that was signed off um, in September, um, that I think puts a very good model in place for educator effectiveness through the evaluation process. Um, we're preparing for the administration of what is now going to be called the Next Generation MCAS, or MCAS 2.0. A focus on professional development, particularly around mathematics, where we have a new curriculum in place, elementary, middle, and high school. Universal design for learning, learning I'd like to talk about that for just a quick moment. We had the very good fortune um, in the last couple of years to have one of our educators, Gina Sacco, who's a special education teacher at the middle school, serve um, on a committee that was formed by the Department of Education that, that wrote um, a guidebook for inclusionary practices for, um, for implementation across the state. 
And in fact, if I go back a slide, um, in the bottom right hand picture, um, there's a gentleman seated, uh, kind of would be looking out at us in a blue shirt. He is uh, Matt Holloway from the Department of Education. And he's on, he works for educator effectiveness for the state. He and Gina Sacco, as, long as, as well as uh, Kathy Lawson, who's the director of the SEAM Collaborative, joined us for part of one of the two days of the retreat and worked with us on universal design for learning and how, how we can use the inclusionary model to, to reach all students uh, and give them broad access to the curriculum. And it, was a very, it was a very proud moment for me um, to have had one of our teachers um, work with us in that capacity. She, Gina did a very, very nice job along with Matt um, and, and along with Kathy Lawson. And then school safety and security. There's a lot of professional development, as you all know, and it's part of what I'm gonna be talking about a little bit later tonight around my goals um, is about enhancing school uh, safety and security and there is a, an obvious need um, for professional development in order to, to enact uh, some of the changes that we hoped uh, we would enact uh, going into this school year and, and for this fall. As well as the evolving technology um, data teams and you, you all know that um, last year was the first year where we have uh, a data leader in each of our five schools and, and we want to continue that practice um, this year. We think that those people leading um, the analysis of data at our five schools has been very helpful in us um, maximizing student achievement. Around technology integration, again, we're in year two of what I think is, has been a very successful digital learning staff model. Um, you saw presentations at some of the school presentations with, that you went to um, last year when uh, the school committee hosted the various schools, and I think all indications are that our digital learning model is working well and we want to continue on that good work. Um, some new, pro new programs and courses. We have the student change team, the help desk, as well as um, we're going to be looking this year to introducing some um, courses in the STEM area, particularly around robotics. That'll be coming to your attention a little bit uh, later in this school year. The large capital plan, um, the proposals for fiscal year 2018, Mr. Connolly spoke about those with you at the last meeting. We, we are looking for um, the support of the community around the acquisition of additional technology to support um, the educational needs. This professional development that needs to go along with that. We have a mobile device initiative, the one-to-one -one pilot that we're rolling out this year that we're all very, very excited about. Um, so I think there's a lot of good things to come in 2016-17 around technology integration. And then lastly, around student support services. <clears throat> Um, again, the committee is, is very familiar with our um, desire as an administrative team last year to, um, to look at in-district programming and how we can best service students um, with special needs. And I think we did a nice job uh, of seeking the funding, and I am appreciative to the community for um, allowing us to hire the teachers that we needed to hire in order to advance some of our programs for students with special needs, and I think that's a good thing. You might recall that last spring I had tasked um, our Director of Pupil Personnel Services, Cynthia Conant, with the formation of a social emotional learning task force. I think it's fair to say you'll, you know, you'll be getting a little bit of an update on that at, at, at probably midpoint this year. Um, that committee has been meeting, it's a voluntary committee of educators that are looking at the whole social emotional learning realm and just, you know, what do we need to be doing better in schools to, to help students come to school every day to be their very best and learn um, as best as they can. Um, there's, there's a need for, if, we, if we're going to be providing, you know, if we're going to adopt the universal design for learning model and believe that all students um, can learn and that some students need more supports than others, um, which I hope we all share, then professional development is, is critical to that. And I just called out here in this slide the Educator Effectiveness Guidebook for Inclusive Practices. That is becoming kind of the, the state's blueprint this year for assisting school districts in um, kind of the, the co-teaching model, if you will, and providing the broad access to all courses for all students. We're also looking at a district-wide tiered intervention model, things like response to intervention, the Massachusetts tiered system of support. You know, these are interventions that schools um, are enacting presently. We've been doing this for some time, but I think there's a, a desire this year among the five principals to achieve a little bit more consistency around what's getting done and to kind of share some of the good practices from, uh, from the experiences that they've had most recently. Um, a little bit further discussion this year about specialized programs, if you look at, um, you know, kind of uh, bullet number one on this slide. This is a, a kind of an extension of that. You know, we're going to be spending the year looking at, you know, what other programs might we need to be thinking about offering. It may not necessarily be in the immediate term, but it could be a year or two out and, and starting to do the um, kind of the necessary planning for making sure that we're able to, um, to offer students, um, all students, an opportunity to learn in their home district. 
And then lastly, falling under student support services is the whole school safety and security initiative. We, um, we have spent an awful lot of time over the last year plus maybe four months or so. We've received uh, wonderful support from the police department in North Reading, the fire department in North Reading, as well as the school committee to adopt the ALICE protocols where we're almost fully implemented. I expect that that will happen um, by November, within November of this year at the latest. Um, and, and I'm excited about that. That's an unfortunate reality of some of the things we need to do in schools in order to make sure that they're safe. But I think it's, um, it's, it's an appropriate and um, responsible uh, program that we have adopted. I've talked with you um, kind of uh, it, in a somewhat vague way about COPSYNC, and it needs to be vague only because it, um, I don't want to compromise the integrity of this kind of technology-based. Uh, it's an additional school safety and security initiative that we're undertaking um, and expect to have in place um, this fall, fully in place this fall. I spoke on opening day um, about the Envoy program. That, that system is up and running in all of our five schools and in the central offices. It's kind of the electronic sign-in procedure. It's gone very well. We, uh, we rolled it out in all of our schools last week. And lastly, um, the two assistant principals, Mike Maloney and Mike Downs from the middle school and the high school respectively, along with um, our school resource officer, Sean O'Leary, our police chief, Mike Murky, Murphy, our fire chief, Billy Warnock, and our deputy fire chief, Barry Galvin, are working on um, updating the school district's um, emergency operations plan. It's been, um, I think it's fair to say that it was just, it was in need of an update. You know, when, when we, we kind of put that off for a bit um, as the new middle school, high school campus came online because it would have seemed almost redundant to be working around emergency operations plans for two schools, two buildings that were no longer going to, going to uh, exist in the, in the format that we um, that we knew them to be. So now that we have the new campus online, it seems the more uh, appropriate time to be to be looking at emergency operations plans um, for the three elementary schools and for the middle high school. So those are the areas that kind of fall under the three strategic uh, excuse me the three strategies and their seven strategic objectives. But then there were also some other things that that the administrative council just wanted wanted to call attention to, and in our year one update of the comprehensive. NRPS 2021 plan, um, these um, eight or so items are the ones that um, I think are worthy of just calling to the attention of the community and to the committee. And that is enhancing the curriculum leadership, preparing for MCAS 2.0, <clears throat> implementing effectively the new mathematics curriculum. There's a desire to expand the foreign language program. By the way, Global Child got off, off and running a week ago Friday at the little school and then in all schools last week, 256 students participating. I think it was a a very good move on, on the district's part, and it's, um, I think only more good can come from that, just a little aside. But I think there's a desire to look at, you know, what would it take to um, expand the foreign language program to a more substantive program at the middle school, but also be looking at the expansion of the languages offered beyond uh, French and Spanish. To assess and enhance school culture and climate in all five of our schools through um, the use of survey. Um, advancing technology initiatives both in staffing and in the availability of devices to assess and plan for industry programming. Um, we will very soon um, be looking at the uh, preliminary work around the development of the fiscal year 2018 budget. I think it's fair to say that we're going to be taking a good hard look at the resources and the staff um, that we think we might need um, in 2017-18 and um, that will come through the development of a comprehensive fiscal year 2018 budget. So while this is the first year of the five-year plan, it's probably more of an update than I might have um, expected to give to you, but I think we were very excited as an administrative council around um, the successes that I think the community and the district enjoyed through NRPS 2016. I think we've, I'll speak for myself, but I think I can speak for, for, the, for the staff and for the administration that uh, we saw that the strategic planning, while it's sometimes in the administrators would probably um, very, very quickly agree with me that it's somewhat, it can be a somewhat tedious task to go through strategic planning. You all know the document, it's 60 some odd pages I think at this point. But I think in the end when you have it done and you can point to it, and I think what we've come to enjoy in North Reading is that when we go to the finance committee or we go to a finance planning team meeting and we talk about NRPS 2016 or NRPS 2021, there's a familiarity with that document and I think people, you know, have, have respected and, and responded well to the idea that we've, we've hunkered down and done some good, thoughtful planning, um, and that we're not just going into budget meetings, for example. Not that anyone has ever suggested this, but I, and they never have, but I think there's a, 
there's a certain amount of respect afforded us because we've done the hard work up front to say these are the things that we think we need in order to be the very best school district that we that we can be that we can be year to year and so i think that's what nrps 2016 um, did for us and i'm very optimistic um, that nrps 2021 um, will do the same so thank you I have a couple questions or comments. The, um, the technology one-to-one -one initiative, Mr. Bernard. Yes. I have to be honest. I feel like I don't have a lot of information about it, and I feel that there really wasn't a clear presentation back in the spring, kind of detailing you know, the philosophy behind it, how teachers were going to be trained, what sorts of projects or you know, learning experiences the students would be sure. using, and even maybe some of the logistics. And I'm aware that you know, we've purchased a lot of devices, and I know Dr. Daly kind of mentioned it a couple times to us, yep. but I don't feel very clear on how that initiative is rolling out. So I don't know if that's something that we can look toward perhaps in the future having a presentation about Sure. That? No, I, I can give you a little bit of information now. Sure. You know, maybe fill in some of the gaps, but I'm not going to pretend that I can fill them all in because okay. that's Dr. Daly's wheelhouse. But what I can tell you is, <clears throat> and it's been in our strategic plan, and we've kind of long desired and I think, you know, have felt as though there is the, uh, the construction of this building and its capacity, I think, drove a lot. In the, in the area of technology. We knew that the middle high school was gonna be rife with this technology and that they, we acquired a lot of technology through the, through the building project. And so I think once we saw that come to fruition with the, you know, the, the near conclusion of the construction of the middle high school, it seemed an opportune time to, to start to think about piloting the one-to-one. -one. And so where we are right now is um, as we looked at the purchase of the um, additional devices last year through the capital plan, we found that we were you know, in a position where we thought we could offer a very good pilot in that we might not have full access to the devices for every team of the middle school. Um, we ultimately decided on grade seven. Um, but as, as in the final analysis, what we, what we found, and Michael, correct me, I think we ended up 16 devices short on the, one, on the uh, Chromebook. 60, yeah. we, we found out in late August, early September, that it looked like we were gonna be 16 devices short to uh, provide every seventh grader with access to um, a Chromebook at all times, okay? And so what, what Mrs. O'Connell did was she kind of looked within her budget and kind of said, you know what, I think I can, I can find this money, worked with Michael, and we made them, they've actually been delivered. So what, it, what it's gonna look like this year is, <clears throat> as a pilot, because it is a pilot, I think what we need to do, we need to first do is get the devices in the hands of the teachers and, and start to have them build the familiarity with them and start to think about what their lesson planning would look like and how they were going to use them. And now that I think we've come to the place we're at with the, such a high level of availability that is every seventh grader having a device, that's kind of the point of this year is, is, is putting the devices in people's hands, starting to do that lesson planning. The professional development um, doesn't really seem to be a, you know, a snag for the team, the team of teams of teachers. Uh, but I think this year is a pilot designed to kind of go out on the fact finding. And it's like, you know, now that we have this, how are we using it? How can we use it better? What are you doing that I could be doing? That kind of a, mm -hmm. a process this year, you know, kind of inherent in it being a pilot. But I know, um, I know that Patrick would be, you know, happy to speak with you more about that. But I think that is a pretty, you know, comprehensive place of where we're at right now and what we're expecting this year to be. And then the idea would be that each year you would advance a grade. So now you'd have two years in in the second year, then you'd have three grades in. And so we thought grade seven seemed to be um, the appropriate place to introduce that so that we would have a grade eight class with two years under its belt before it went to high school. And I think that's how we decided upon grade seven. Sure, if I could inject just a second. I, I'd like to have <coughs> Because I, you know, I, I'm I'm a huge proponent of technology, but you know, one of the things I'd like to know is, is what's happened in those other districts that have gone one to one. Um, also, there's been a lot of studies I've read lately saying that note taking with paper and pen is more effective than note taking on a computer, mm -hmm. and that people retain more mm -hmm. when they take notes with paper and pen. And I just, I guess, um, you know, 
I still, going back to when I was a newspaper reporter, I still take all notes on paper and pen because I just, I seem to retain it better. You know, I'm like Jerry in that mm -hmm. way. Um, seriously, I, I mean. Well, I'm, I'm, it's been a practice of mine. <laughs> and I, no, I'm serious. Yeah. And, you know, so, so I just, I guess like I, I, I want us to, to take the maximum advantage of the technology we have, but I just want to hear the philosophy and, you know, I know we're not just doing it to do it. We would never do that, but I, I just want to, you know, sure. feel comfortable. Yeah, and I think I think what would be nice too, and I and I can speak to Kathy O'Connell about this, is when, when the middle school does its annual presentation for the school committee, I think, you know, it might be nice to hear about some of the kind of I think you enjoy seeing the students and the teachers talk about the work they're doing. You know, last year when we heard about the digital learning, you know, that seemed to be something I think the, the, the maker, committee was the very maker recent. Lab at the hood school yeah, the maker spaces, yeah. yeah. So I, I think those are opportunities for people to come in and show you and and you know, and again, we're four weeks into it. It's you know, it's very much evolving. Um, but I think there's you know, I think there's value in in the presentation and, and you hearing more about you know where where we want to see this go. Okay. And just another a follow up question. So the seventh grade has their Chromebooks. Correct. Now sixth and eighth still have access to Chromebook cards. Cards. Right? Correct. Okay. Right. Right. The idea what we have in grade seven is there's. Um, Cards available all the time for those for those teams. Okay. But the others are kind of signed, much like we have at the high school and sure. the three elementaries. Anything further? I had a couple questions. Um, one is when you talk about. Um, hold on a second here. Of course, I can't find it now. The um, social emotional and behavior programs yeah. and the social emotional learning. We did add the um, psych psychologist position at the middle school. I'm just curious, do we have any feedback yet as to the effectiveness of that? Is it too early in terms of the impact of bringing that psychologist into the middle school? Um, I think it's. I think it's too early to tell. Mm -hmm. um, Six weeks. But I I I know where the middle school was, and what they hoped for. And actually, you know, interestingly enough, I know very well the person that ended up taking the job. Right. I hired him exactly. <laughs> when he worked at the high school. He's great. And I mean, he's very good. Yeah. And so I, I can only imagine. I mean, I've heard, you know, nothing negative, and and I, j I know that that's a model that you know they were just the middle school needed a, a third a third counselor. Um, we have a new person at the high school. You know, the the, the needs are <clears throat> the needs are more significant than I would have imagined them being. And while the addition of a school psychologist at the middle school to bring, to bring now three counselors there in, its, in and of itself is huge and significant, but um, it's one area that I think so much else relies upon that um, I think we need to be constantly thinking about, I, I, quite honestly, I don't think we have enough staff even now. And we haven't even touched I think what the needs are at the elementary schools. Right. And if you were to look through um, NRPS 2021, the entire document, you would see, you know, I gave you a summary tonight, but it's there. And I think we, we need to really start to take a good hard look at um, these supports, the issues that the children are coming into schools with. Um, you know, this is 30 years for me doing it, and it's, I, I'm really, um, I don't want to be overly dramatic, and I don't, I'm not disturbed, but I'm, I'm concerned. I think there's just a lot of issues for a lot of kids, and, and I don't think we're touching on some of those because we just, we just don't have mechanisms in place to provide them with opportunities to come and talk about the things that, they, that are bothering them, and sometimes they emerge through, you know, through things that we don't like to see, you know, behaviors and such, and that's unfortunate. But I think, this, as I've said to you all before, the whole idea of social emotional learning is a theme. It, it was a theme of the Mass Association of School Superintendents last year. It continues to be um, the theme for our professional development as a professional organization this year. It's, it's everywhere. It's in every community. It's in every school district. And I think, you know, while I was very pleased to add that staff person, I think we still are, are um, you know, not where I think we need a community like this needs to be. And I think, unfortunately, because we enjoy so many good and wonderful successes in a district like ours, you know, it's, it's easy for those kinds of um, problems to be um, not neglected or overlooked, certainly not with any kind of an intent, but it just, it just it happens, unfortunately. I think the good news is we're becoming increasingly cognizant. You know, we've got a social-emotional task force. I think we've got administrators that are very plugged into it. 
Um, I'd like to think I am. You know, it's kind of a high priority of the work I do. I just, I've long believed that if a, if a kid doesn't come to school feeling safe and supported, then, you know, that's what I meant about a minute ago when I said nothing, you know, a lot of the other good stuff can't happen for them because um, the social emotional piece gets in the way and that's, that's unfortunate. So I, you know, I think about where we were and when I came to North Reading in 2003, we had two guidance counselors at the high school. And, you know, now, now we've got four guidance counselors, a school adjustment counselor, a school psychologist. You know, th that, that tells you in, in a relatively short period of time, you know, We've 14, become 14 years. Since you got here. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you need a lot of therapy. <laughs> I got it. No, no, it's really, it is. There's a lot of needs. And I think um, it's just, it's, it's very much, I think it's, it's, it's a heightened focused area. I think and just thinking, all of us. you know, listening to Dan talk about his <clears throat> applying to college, a lot of the guidance counselor's responsibilities fall to college applications. Right. You yes. know, that, yeah. that consumes a lot of their time. So what could be, you know, Correct. what time they have available mm -hmm. to sit down and talk with students yeah. about some issues, you know, that's at a premium, you know. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right with that. Um, the school, we have, we're lucky that the, the other support staff, school, school adjustment counselors, school psychologists that we've had, you know, are very good. I mean, they are you know, beyond busy. I just, I know the work that they do. And they're, they're good people. I mean, they care, you know, deeply about it, but, um, which is why they're in that kind of work. But, yeah. I have two other quick things. Yeah, um, sure. John, you mentioned, you know, sometimes the administrative council sees this as a slog, going, you know, spending all the time going through the, the, all, the, all the, the details and the words and the time that's spent on it, and, and it's time well spent. I think for us and for you, it it's, can become a frustration because of budget issues. There are a lot of things on here that we'd like to implement. Yeah, that's true. And we get around, to, <clears throat> you know, the foreign language thing. You talked about the additional guidance counselor. I think I was asking for that for about 10 years, and we yeah. finally got it. So right. I guess it takes a lot of uh, patience and perseverance. Um, the expanding the language program and some of the other programs, I think, um, are mm -hmm. important. And, and I hope we can get the budget for that. The other thing I had a question, and, and it's not, I don't think it's a required part of uh, the, you know, Common Core, or et cetera. Um, I don't know what the new history or social studies common core looks like, but I always come back to two things that I think, and I know some of this is taught at our school, but I don't think it's taught to everybody. Two things that I always think are missing in public education is good civics course, good civics education, and personal finance education. Mm -hmm. and, and I know we don't have a lot of time to add a lot of different courses, but I wish the state would make those requirements. It's just so, it's critical. And you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get into political, what candidate I support, what candidate I don't support. But if you just look at what's going on in our country now, and people don't read, they don't understand our government. They, mm -hmm. And I just, you know, we, got, we have a lot of smart kids here in North Reading, and I, and, and I just wish we could spend more time on how our government works and how to not go bankrupt, basically, you know, and how to write a check and how to pay your credit card and, and stuff like that. Although we don't write checks. Never, <laughs> these kids are never going to write it out. No, I was going to say, the checks are gone. How to use Venmo, I, I will PayPal. I will tell you, just as a, you know, just for informational purposes, you know, and I think North Reading High School is, I can tell you, in the minority um, of high schools that offers, a or, or that requires students to take four years of all of the four major subjects, English, math, science, and social studies. It's very unusual in the sciences and social studies, and in some schools, even the math, but that's, that's evolved a lot recently. But our senior required course is the civics and government course. So our, our students in grade 12, at least, um, unless they take advanced placement government and politics, which would make sense, right. um, that's a required course. Even if a student takes the advanced placement in US history, it doesn't, it's not often, that's a required course for them. And, and I think that's a good thing. Um, and you're right, you know, Dan did a nice present. I mean, I think, you know, those, those skills, he started the, uh, the um, political society that you all adopted a couple of years ago. You know, I think that's, I think it, I'd like to think it stems from those kinds of experiences. As far as the business department, again, I think, I think back of where, where the courses were that we were offering, you know, 10 years ago and where we're offering today. And the business department is hugely popular. And we do offer courses on personal finance, um, insurance and taxation, financial management, small business management. And they're, they're, they're fairly popular, but to say that, they should um, be a required course. I think you're probably right. You know, I, think I think the think basics of yeah. personal finance sure. should absolutely Amortization be, of a mortgage, those exactly. kinds of things. You know, absolutely and those, be required. That is the curriculum. The unfortunate thing there is not every student is taking that course. Right, right. But I, and I know the civics, but to me, any more civics and more personal finance yeah. is always a goal. So. Well, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate the, the state 
have, <coughs> you know, gravitated toward, you know, the ELA and the math standards right. and, you know, common core standards were first That's you true. Know, th th to come out. Yeah. And I mean, I've been in meetings where, you know, principals have told me, find, find a little bit of time for social studies. Right. The focus is ELA, math, and maybe some science. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's just the nature of yeah. what has happened yeah. to our curriculum at the state level. I'm hoping that will sh shift a little bit back in the other direction, especially to social studies. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's it yeah, if for me. If I can back up a little bit. You, you mentioned the amount of change that's happened since you came into town. Is, is this, uh, do you think this is a, these problems are an evolving thing or are we just better getting better at identifying that there are problems? That's a very interesting, uh, I think it's a little bit, of, I do think it's a little bit of both. I, I think the second part of what you mentioned is, is not something to be um, minimized. I, I, I look, I, I would put as examples, bullying, concussions. I think, you know, th I think those things always existed, but, if, but I think we're more attuned to them, and I yeah, think those our, things existed when right. I was in school. So I don't know that there we is any more of it. Uh, yeah, I, you know, and you played football without a little leather helmet, right? And so <laughs> never affected me. <laughs> I think that, so. I don't. I don't. I think the second part of your question is I. I think it's a little bit of both because I do think that we're we're more vigilant about things too, and and so while it may look like there's quote unquote more of it, I don't know if that's really always the case. I think it could be. We just. No more we're attuned about to it. More, no, like we know more about else it. Everything else in life, we know more I think about so. it today. I think, than we yeah, I think it's know. a combination, but I, I do think that's a fact, and, my, and that's my belief. And any other inputs? Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go right on to uh, your uh, evaluation mid cycle goals update and progress report. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, don't, I don't want to. You know, get too much into the weeds here, but I'll get in as far as you want. I, I'm not sure what would be most useful for all of you, but I, I thought about this um, over the weekend and today, and, and and I thought I might just, if I could, call out a few things for you. So, right now, my cycle is through um, an annual evaluation to happen in April, and so what I thought um, this, what I hoped this document would serve um, for you is really, I think, kind of the, what I'm going to call the peach column out on the right-hand side, um, which is kind of an up-to-date, in my opinion, my status of where I am in meeting um, the five goals. So what's in green is each of the five goals that I adopted um, last February with your, with your blessing, um, my professional practice goal, a student um, learning goal, and then three district improvement goals. And so what I've tried to do in this, in this grid is to provide you with some some level of detail, but also a summary of where I think things are um, to date um, with re respect to my working toward meeting those five goals. And, and, and in some cases, I think things are completed, but in other cases, I've, I've indicated that I think they're in progress because they were for um, a completion time period of April 2017. And just again, for and I'm going to talk about these in just a moment when I do my, my supplemental report to you, what I've tried to do, and I think this came out of the workshop that the committee had um, not quite a year, maybe not quite a year ago with uh, Mike Gilbert from MASC. As you'll recall, on, on either the superintendent reports or my supplemental reports, I'm try, I've tried now to identify for you, I'm just holding up an example here of, you know, I kind of highlight for you where I think there's a tie-in. And I think early on, the committee liked that idea. It's, it's been very helpful for me to try to just do a little bit better of, uh, job of staying organized of what, what I think relates to my goals development. And I, do, I did bring my binder tonight. I'm certainly not, you know, I am continuing to maintain a binder, kind of an evidence collection of some things that I think are important. I mean, I think there'll probably be a time in the late winter, early spring when you'll want to come in and take a look at that again as you think about my annual evaluation. But essentially what I think for me, and I want this to be more purposeful for you than it is for me at this point, um, you know, I, I think I'm continuing to work with the Mass Association of School Superintendents on, on the new superintendent induction program. That's a three-year program. I'm, I'm in year three of that now. Um, three content days and five consultancy days. I had a, a, a content day last, uh, last Thursday down at, in Marlboro. Um, you know, things continue to, to, to be very beneficial. It's a, that's been a huge... Um, it's, a, it's a program, statewide program for all new superintendents for three, their first three years that, um, I, you know, certainly has been hugely helpful to me. 
um, to transition into the new role. And so I've just given you some examples of some of the things that happened as a result of that work. Um, the student learning goal, you know, I'm, 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 I'm continuing to look at data. Um, we just recently received our MCAS and PARC scores. You're going to get a presentation on November 7th um, about that. You know, we saw um, at the last meeting two of our schools at, at level one, um, the Batchelder School and the, uh, in the Hood School. Um, you know, the, for us, the high needs um, subgroup is, is the one that I think is, is most challenging. Um, the all student subgroup becomes challenging and just because in our district, you know, in some ways we're a little bit of a victim of our own success. This, there's very little area to grow and so if you don't meet those targets, it's not, it's kind of that weird uh, dilemma of, you know, a couple of percentage points, you know, might make the difference and that could, you know, translate to like four students. So, but obviously we continue to do work to try to, to make sure that all of our students, um, you know, do their very best work. And then as far as the district improvement goals, um, you know, the first one is around the strategic plan. You know, I, I'm hoping that NRPS 2021 is, is, is meets with your satisfaction. I think, you know, I just, I, I, an awful lot of good hard work went into that and I think it does really, you know, serve this district well. Um, so my first um, district improvement goal centered on uh, making sure that we had a strategic plan in place and I think it's fair to say that we do. Um, school safety and security, you know, you, I, I've done my best to try to keep you updated with the initiatives there. I think, you know, as I said, um, this week and next week are presentations at our three elementary schools and then the only thing that's remaining is a drill um, with students to happen in, uh, in November. Um, and I think, you know, that will kind of bring us to a close with kind of the first year um, introduction of the ALICE program that I've talked a little bit tonight already about COPSYNC and Envoy. And then lastly, and I'm gonna talk about this in, as part of my supplemental report tonight, um, is, was the um, district and management and operations goal, and that was um, to bring the, um, the little school roof project um, to a close, and, and, and we're almost there, and I'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later. But um, you know, I'm hoping that these, whatever it is, six or seven pages, gives you a view into um, where I am in terms of working to try um, to meet my goals, and you know, I, I, I rely a lot on the people around me um, to make sure that we, you know, collaboratively um, reach our goals. And, and I think, you know, I'm fortunate that my relationships with the central office administrators, um, the administrative council, as well as the, the faculty and staff is, is, you know, has put me where I think uh, in a good position to, to be on target to, to meet my goals um, by April, so. Any, yes. Uh, first thing I want to do is, um, I wanted to commend John and the administrative staff on the um, school safety and security. I, I think the school committee has had a number of questions and we've had a couple of uh, <coughs> executive sessions asking about different things. And I think the response by both John and the rest of the administrative staff has been outstanding, especially in securing, making sure that these buildings are as safe and secure as they can possibly be. So I, I wanna commend you for, um, for that. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, and it doesn't tie directly to your goals, but I've been reading a lot about the, the teacher evaluation and the potential for changing um, the uh, aspect of it where teachers would be um, rated, a good part of the rating would be based on standardized test scores. Mm -hmm. Have you got any, it, it seems to me that that may be going away or in, in some form. I think, I think what you're going to see, um, I think you're very likely to see is around the district determined measures, right. the, the DDMs, you know, it looks like it looks like that's on its way out. Okay. I think it's fair to say that. I don't know how, how extensive um, the commissioner has come out on that in a public way, but I think, it's, I think, you'd, I think you're gonna see that happen. Okay. And I think you're gonna see that happen very soon. Good. You know, we worked, and Mr. Bow, you signed the, the, the collective bargaining agreement that was ratified by the NREA in September. We worked very well with the NREA, I really applaud them and I applaud the folks that worked with me, uh, Patrick, Kathy O'Connell. Um, I think we did a good job coming together with a, with a model that fit our purposes and we were, you know, we were, we were mindful of, of the future of DDMs when we were coming to a close on, on developing that document for ratification, but unfortunately it got signed in September and it was very shortly after that, that it started to come out of DESC that it looked like DD, DDMs were gonna go by the wayside. But it doesn't mean, I don't think it has a real bearing on where we are right now right. With, with like the whole educator evaluation system with the goals development and right. such, I, I think that's okay. But ultimately the rating system is likely to, right. to show some modification. Cool. Um, Mr. Bernard, I was wondering if you could elaborate <laughs> a little bit on the, um, 
the school-based meetings with administrators to review yes. state testing? Because I thought that was pretty interesting, and I just you know, wanted to hear more about it. I had one today, uh, as a matter of fact. And, it and at the end of the day today, Patrick and I were talking about, we've had two. With, with the middle school and the hood school. The hood school was today. So just very quickly, what, what's different this year, well, we, we, we tried a different tack. Traditionally, the entire administrative council has talked about the results for all the schools mm -hmm. with everybody in the room. And Patrick and I talked, um, I don't know, a month, a month or so ago, roughly. And we talked about the idea of, you know, maybe we would do it differently. Maybe we'd have a focused meeting with um, each principal to talk about their school's data first. And so I meet monthly with um, the principals kind of in a formal way. Doesn't mean I never see them month to month, but I have a formal two hour meeting scheduled with them and I schedule those in the summer for the year. So what, what, what Patrick and I have done is we've, in the, in the first meeting this year, we've spent the first part of that meeting with the principal on the data. And, and then the second part of the meeting is my meeting with them about just all of the sure. other things we need to sure. talk about. So it's interesting that you raised, and I'm actually glad you did because we talked about it today, that we, we, we had the meeting with the Hood School today. Like I said, uh, two weeks ago, I think we had the meeting with the middle school principal. And um, I think whoever the three are, you know, today it was Glenn and, and Patrick and me, um, you know, felt that there was greater value in that. It's, I say this with all due respect, but sometimes when you're doing it in the room with nine people, and I experienced it as a principal, when the conversations around the hood school, you know, the high school principals kind of, I don't know how the level of engagement might not be, you know, mm -hmm. what it need, you know, and, and that's just natural. Well, it kind of it's, centers it's, you. It does, it does. And, okay. I, and so we had a very, I thought it was today was, you know, we kind of budgeted an hour, went a little bit longer than that, it actually went about an hour and a half. Um, but it was very good to kind of dig down into that, that school's data with just the principal, the superintendent, and the assistant superintendent. So yeah, it is. I called it out as something that we're doing new this year. So yeah, I think that's. It's been. It was. It, it's great. It, we've done two out of the five, it. and so it's been. Agree. It's been interesting. And then one more question. Yes. The um, this online tool for um, curriculum alignment. Yeah. And it, it it appears that we didn't have funding for it, but it's something that we're looking to implement in the future. It is, so things like an atlas. Are you familiar with like atlas, the okay. curriculum? So there there are there are there are online uh, tools, online resources that allow data to be submitted, and then it kind of creates all of the benchmarking and the. Um, kind of the sequ scope and sequence and, and I, but there's a desire for us to do have something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that because it just as things change and you update curriculum you're not kind of going back to the whole drawing board again which is kind of what our practice has been mm -hmm. but there's an expense to it but it is something we're you know continuing to look at it's just unfortunately funding it might be the prohibition on it okay thank you sure uh, I have a comment um, I'd like to thank you very much for moving the Alice program along as fast as you have. It seems to me that You're we welcome. have a much longer time frame in this when we first heard right. about it. And I think you're right, yeah. And uh, we moved yeah. it considerably you, you did, and we, yeah. And, and unfortunately, we got compromised by the snow day in right. February of all, but right. I think, yeah, it's, and I really, you know, I really, I thank you for acknowledging it, and I have to tell you, Mike Maloney um, and Michael Downs have done, as the school personnel, have done a really, really nice job of, of taking that bull by the horns and shepherding that through with the police and fire department. And we had a, we had the elementary um, teachers in a in a drill on Friday this past Friday. Um, so all staff have been trained. It's we're now working with the remaining students. But um, so good. I'm, I'm glad you're pleased. Thank you. Uh, anything further on that? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is routine matters minutes for September 26th open session. Move to approve uh, minutes of September 26th open session as written. Um, I'd like to make an amendment on page seven. Just seven. The spelling of my name. <laughs> you you really read deeply. I never read page seven. Page seven? I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, it's page seven. seven. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, that's okay. That's wow. Where is that? Yeah, um, e. Yeah. Oh. J9. Mm. J9. E. Yeah. J9. Next <laughs> week. Next week. A little bit of an ego <laughs> there, huh? Oh, they spelled my name wrong. Did you know. just look for your name when you go? I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll move to accept yeah. as amended. Thank you. Second. Uh, wow. 
Wow. I have a, uh, Jeez. I have a, a, a comment on this. Uh, uh -oh. we, we refer here in, under visitors to Buffy Rymel. Oh, yeah, it's and Elizabeth. I think it probably ought to say that Elizabeth. That was me. Elizabeth, right? Yeah, yeah it's Elizabeth. We all know her. Yeah. Eli Buffy. That's her yes. formal name, right. Buffy's yeah. not a real name? No. <laughs> no, it's not a real name. Oh. I actually forgot that. I've always known her as oh, yeah, Buffy. So yeah. now we have a uh, motion. Is that <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept as amended again. Cindy, did you get it? Elizabeth, second. Did you get it? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Good catch, Cliff. And uh, <laughs> no budget update. That's correct. Um, staffing, superintendent. So thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So maybe between uh, Michael, please feel free to jump in. So essentially, um, what I wanted to update you on was we. The short story is. I felt the need to, to hire a .4 part-time uh, teacher for ESL services. And, and there was kind of a time restriction around this. We had, um, we don't have a lot of students requiring um, English as a second language services, but we had um, a pretty significant increase in the number of students move into the district in a, in a relatively short period of time. I think we have 13, 13 total students now. Does that sound right? And we had a, a family move in, um, as well as an, a second a family with more than one child and another family. And so we had been contracting these services out beyond the one teacher we had in the district. And we have one teacher that one full time teacher that services five schools. But because of the um, and then we would contract services um, to supplement her hours to make sure that all of the services uh, for the students were met. But with the additional number of students and the um, across the five schools, elementary, middle, and high school, to be able to coordinate the schedule with the one teacher that we have on staff was impossible. And to contract the services would have been more expensive than hiring the person. And, and so we got a few more hours with a point four. There are no benefits attached to it. Um, I made the decision to move on it because we had students that, some students require more than two hours of service a day. So there was a need to kind of get them the immediate services. We were very fortunate to find somebody, a very qualified person, um, who has already started with us. She started last Monday. I think I hired her on Friday and she started literally on Monday. So it was a, it was a necessity, but in the same time, you know, I think we, we did the prudent thing from a financial standpoint as well. And we, we did our best to, um, Michael held my feet to the fire that, you know, we couldn't have any benefits attached to it. <laughs> we were very cognizant of that expense, but um, I think right now we're in a place where cost effectively we're meeting needs, but more importantly, academically we're meeting the needs too. The other staffing update, um, at the time I wrote the report, I did not um, have it in here because it had not come to fruition, but I did send you all an email this week, but we did, um, we did hire and offer um, the position to um, a receptionist and a central office business, excuse me, a business office uh, support personnel. So Rosalie McKillop um, is a young lady who um, we interviewed and selected from among 50 some odd candidates, yes, I think. Yeah, we're we interviewed six um, very good people. Um, we had, uh, you know, a couple of full days of interviews. Um, some, you know, we had some difficult decisions to make. We had, like I said, we had good people with good, good, good broad ranges of experience, and um, I think it's fair to say we really, we, we kind of the, the central office administrators and and uh, Ann Lundell and Savita Pai, who, who sat on the interview committee, we really struggled with kind of mm -hmm. narrowing that list down and then ultimately making a selection. But I think we hired somebody that has some, a good match for experience, uh, has been working um, over 10 years and for Leahy Health, um, had outstanding references. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're excited she's going to be starting with us on, um, on the 24th, so a week from Monday. Next item on our agenda is uh, bids and donation. And we have a, um, a donation from the Little School Parents Association of $350 to support transportation costs associated with field trips for students in grade four move or uh, make a motion to move to approve with gratitude $350 donation from the Little School Parents Association to help support the cost for transportation for the fourth grade field trip. Second. A second. Okay. Um, any 
Made and seconded. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. And we have a donation from the Little School Parents Association of $1,480 to support transportation costs associated with field trips for students in grades one, two, and three. Make a motion to accept with gratitude $1,480 donation from the Little School Parents Association to help support the cost for the transportation for class fields in grades one, two, and three. How will the fifth graders get to the field? <laughs> they must not be going. Uh -huh. I was curious. Julie seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hmm. Unanimous. Before we move to the, uh, I wanted to bring this up under new business. It's uh, Monday's town meeting, next Monday. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on the warrant, we have Article 9. Um, I think there's going to be some discussion about that at town meeting. I don't know if we should have somebody prepared to speak on that. What's that? Oh, I think the there's going to be significant. The, the, the Article answer? 9 is the appropriate money for construction of the facilities at Arthur County Field. So I'm not sure what the discussion well, is going to be at town meeting. We, we have that be, meeting tomorrow night. I wonder once if we. That will help yeah. us. Yeah. Perhaps we'll. We, find we as a committee need to be prepared to. I think maybe speak. we can discuss tomorrow night, maybe tomorrow night after okay. we hear whatever information comes in. And right. Is, you know what our recommendations well, tomorrow night is our meeting as well yeah. so right because I think there'll be some right. questions at town meeting so okay. all right That's a good idea mm -hmm. think about it okay subcommittee updates mr. Webster and mr. Zimbriano um, had already yep uh, reported athletic subcommittee uh, I'm sorry athletic facilities committee had right. met but uh, mr. Webster mr. Benazio you have any Projects moving along. The uh, uh, irrigation aspect of the softball field should be completed tomorrow. They have about half of the um, all-purpose field laid out. Um, I know Jerry's been harassing the contractor on a daily basis, and I spent about 15 minutes with him today before the uh, girls' yeah. softball game. Yeah, and he goes, he's your school committee, guys. And I said, oh, you mean you, you talked to Jerry? And he's like, oh, yeah, I talked to Jerry. I spent a lot of time with Jerry. Did I get down and bother him, too? Uh, yeah, you can go, too. Yeah, he's, he's, he's get No, he's a real guy. I was sitting here thinking the same thing. I didn't want to say it. I was thinking that myself. Get a number of us down there. Maybe <laughs> get a I was down there three times today. I think at one point he was wondering if I was looking for a job. But um, <laughs> it's moving along. I, I did have one concern, and I was on vacation. I got back. And the first thing I did, and my wife's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm researching on sod and when you can lay <laughs> sod in New England. And come to find out, and then I talked to Jerry today, and he had talked to the contractor, the guy from Weed and Feed. You can lay sod anytime. He says you can lay it in the middle of the winter. And he said, he said he's shoveled snow in January, and you put the sod down. It goes dormant. It absorbs all the moisture. And he says by April, the weeds, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing that. He said, but by April, the roots have taken. So we're, we're in no. It's bumpy, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're in no danger in terms of the side. Um, I, I think it's moving along. It's good to see the progress the last two yes. days. So they worked yesterday, which was the hall. Right. They made a lot of progress in a couple of days. They made a lot of progress yeah. the last two days. Yeah, yeah. yeah the heads are ready. It, it, the, as I said, softball field yeah. will be done tomorrow, and they're going to move right over to the, um, yeah. to the other field. I, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, and I, and I just want to stop doing this, but we still need funds for this. Um, we've had a couple of pledges of funds. We have not received checks yet, but they're from a couple of um, you know, good sources, and, and I think those, those checks should be coming in soon. But we still need to continue. Anybody out there who wants to donate you know, from a dollar to uh, $5,000 or whatever, a dollar, $10, um, just send your donations to the school department um, mm -hmm. and make the checks out to the North Reading School Department. And you know, we'll, we'll be playing on those fields in the spring. And uh, so it looks good. It's going to look great when the sod uh, gets rolled out. It is probably in the next week, week and a half or so. And we desperately need the fields. I mean, we're really beating yep. up the baseball field. Yep. Um, we have dual practices going on. The football field day. was practicing on the on the baseball field yep. today. They, and they do several times a week. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's it, Mr. Chair. The okay. uh, subcommittee schedule. Uh, Tomorrow morning at 8.15, we have a finance planning team in the superintendent's office. Uh, athletic subcommittee meets on October 25th at 12.30 in the afternoon. 
The SSBC meeting happens on October 25th at 5.30 in the afternoon in the Distance Learning Lab here. NORCAM Board of Directors meets October 27th, 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office. Uh, <clears throat> there's also uh, n not a subcommittee meeting, there's a, a meeting of uh, of the school committee and selectmen. Mm. Uh, Finance committee, too, I think. Right. Yes. Right. A joint meeting tomorrow evening at 7. And that's here? Room 14 at the time. Room 14. Right. All right. I can not go to the wrong place. <coughs> uh, administrative report. Chairman, thank you. So a few things for you. Um, you know, I just I want to continue to keep you updated on the little school roof. So, um, the the work the work is largely complete. Um, uh, you know, there's a little bit of finished work going on now. Um, you know, full completion is expected by October 21st. Um, but I think that's really, I, I think that deadline will be you know met far in advance of that. Um, I can gladly say to you that as of right now, this moment, um, the broad part project remains um, under budget, um, which is a good thing to the extent um, that it's under budget. You know, it's really, it's kind of, that's a bit of a moving target. But um, even with some of the add-ons that have been authorized, which I think were smart add-ons, um, they're well, well within the bu budgeted amount. I was not. I was not happy to hear the closeout procedure could last as long as nine months. Believe it or not, with the MSBA, but that's what I was told. So shocking, you know, time. I'll, I'll Shock, Jerry. How about you? We'll, we'll hang. We'll hang in there with it. But shocking. Uh, that's, we closed that's out the, the batch yet? Yeah, <laughs> the bat. The batch yeah, that's, We just closed it out last week. <laughs> so believe it or not, that's I put it in there. But I was as I typed it, my hands were shaking. Um, I want to just uh, let you know. I, I think I've talked with some of you about this in a bit of a cursory way, but. Um, <clears throat> back back in the spring, I, I invited all of the superintendents of the KPN League meeting, uh, excuse me, of the KPN League um, to a meeting if they were interested in just kind of, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, putting a toe in the water to talk about school start times. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing I think that kind of crops up every several years or so. It cropped up in this district about 10 years ago. Mr. Webster, am I right? About 10, I think it was 2006 was yeah. the report. So in any case, the Middlesex League, uh, Athletic League um, superintendents had come together and I just, long story short, a number of students expressed interest. We held a meeting and there was enough interest to have a second meeting and we had that in late September. And I would say to you that while there were fewer people at the meeting in September, there remains to be interest in looking at school start times. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, there, there are a lot of things that you could point to that say might be difficulties or complications around making kind of an adjustment. And I certainly am not here saying to you tonight that, you know, I think that North Reading is moving in that direction on any kind of a fast track. You know, and certainly there would have to be a whole lot of work that gets done and the committee would need to be involved. But I thought it was important to just let you know tonight that, that there's been some exploratory work that's taken place among the the KPN League superintendents. I've hosted two meetings. I've offered to host a third. Some districts in the league are a little bit further along with their work. Newburyport, Masconomet, and one other. Newburyport and Georgetown. And so, I'm 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 thinking that um, I would like to ask the assistant superintendent, who's been doing work in PAWS, Public Awareness and Understanding of Social Education, the Health and Wellness Committee, to, to chair a task force um, that is going to look at this a little bit more deeply. And the reason I've asked Patrick to kind of take this on as a special project is I think there's a, a logical tie-in to the work that's been going around on with PAWS and the Wellness Committee, committee because I think the deeper I look at school start times and the benefits to children um, around altering those, i.e. a later start time, particularly at the high school, um, there, it's more than just a later start time. It's, it's the whole social emotional aspect. It's the wellness aspect. It's the well-being aspect. So I think there's a lot of things that um, there's work that's been done over the years um, by those two committees. There's been some good groundwork, I think, laid um, more recently in the league. And so I, I, I'm, I'm going to be looking to take that to another level, okay? And I just, you know, what that means and where it goes and, and, you know, if it goes and how long it takes to get there, you know, is all up in the air. I don't want to give any preconceived um, or misleading information to anybody, particularly, you know, 
the public that this is going to be something we're looking to, you know, we're going to be altering start times in September. That's not going to happen. I can assure people of that. October, maybe. But uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, it, it's, it's, I, I think it's fair to say it's, it's years away um, because there are just so many things to consider, whether it's athletic schedules, transportation, contract negotiations with employees, uh, giving families ample notice around, you know, changes that they might need to make in their lives around accommodating children starting school. At a t so I think we're you know, quite, a, quite a ways away from anything substantive if it were to come. But I, I do think it's an important enough subject that um, it, it warrants some attention. So Can I make a request slash recommendation? I yeah. I, I have someone in mind. No, could we have a school committee member on that sure. task force? Yeah. I think Julie would love to serve on it. <laughs> I wouldn't no. mind. No, I think you'd be good on it. You know what? I'll, you've well, got a lot I'll, of interest in it, and I did it before. You'll get, well, I'll, I'll have him send an invitation. Who, I think you it know, would be I, great. I, yeah, if, I do. If we had at least I think that happened last time. Right? I second yeah. that. Yeah. What? For Julie? Yes. How about two? I would, yeah. If yeah. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. two's fine. I don't think. One's not me. If it's two, <laughs> I would like to. Re you could accommodate, there. you could accommodate up to two, so yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to put. No, John, you referenced Newburyport, Georgetown, Masco as being further along in the process. Yeah. So are they, they must be considering later start times and how does that play into Cape? Yeah, it, well, that's, it's, that's gonna be incumbent upon them. And, and I, you know, so I think if the league doesn't shift, it's a problem for that school that does shift. Sure. I think what the, the beauty of what the, uh, the uh, Middlesex League did, and it's kind of packed, if you will, was they gave district, each district signed on that they would have a plan in, in like three years. Um, and so, if you're, um, you know, for us, for example, if we were, if we were to, um, to do something um, in North Reading and you advanced your start time for the high school, just again, sake of discussion, an hour, and we started school at 8.30 and ran till 3 o'clock instead of 2 o'clock, but we had a 3.45 soccer game in Rockport, that's a problem for North Reading. Sure. You know, that's not a, so I think they're gonna be up against those. They're, you know, whether they consider early dismissals for things, I mean, I think those are the kinds of conversations those communities are going to have to have. It, I don't think it's on the other end where. I think it's a good idea to give the kids an extra hour and I have to play with their devices. So well, you know, I, in, I in all in all fairness, Jerry, you know, you, I, I know. I know the data is the data. <laughs> no, but I think there is something to be said for if something doesn't come out of the schedule, all it does is advance things an hour or two. I think you're right. right. You know, if something doesn't come out, instead of doing your homework till 11 and you're doing it till midnight. So you can get up at There's seven instead of, of six. It's just, about, you know, biological. There is, there is. I agree. I agree. And yet, for the last fifty years at least, colleges <laughs> begin their classes at eight a.m. on college. And most smart kids don't campus. take any of those. And classes. you have, and you have choice <laughs> yeah. in that. You right. don't have to. No, do no, you don't necessarily class. have choice. Well, most of the time. Not necessarily. Most not. Of the time my son doesn't start until like three in the afternoon. Not as a freshman. But I'm just. So these are the things that the, the work will be done. To, you know, and by the time we get around to it, Mr. Venezia will, will be off God. the committee. I might be I too, though. So, uh, that Newton did a, a yes. comprehensive study on right. that, yeah. and uh, a, a, they found that it was more complicated than right. just moving it an hour. There's some good information in the study, though. Huge amount of information, yeah. and they, it was it is, very that? comprehensive. There, no, I don't. I have yours. You don't have the Newton study. It, but you're right, there are a lot online. of factors it's to consider. Cliff, I think I Newton, while the information we get from them is helpful, Newton is also oh, it's a much 10 times yeah. the size of Reading. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so I would think, you know, perhaps, I don't know. We, we are not Newton. No question that we're not Newton. I'm glad. Uh, but th there were, was a Some lot logistics. of interesting information. Yeah, right. There is. And, sure. And things that you wouldn't think of that pop up. The, you know, we, we don't have a lot of them, but there were kids that, that uh, couldn't, couldn't wait that long because they had to be up at a certain hour or had to be home at a certain right, hour to take hour care, to of, take care of, of a sibling, a sibling right, sure. who was a lot younger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, or they had to work because they were supporting their family <laughs> and uh, uh, little, little things like that that sure. uh, were, were complications yeah. and you, you should, not just discard those. Those mm -hmm. ought to be uh, a part of any yeah. analysis. Sure. Well, the Middlesex League experiment is going to be interesting to follow since the entire league has signed on to this, and we'll see if they all 
I mean, I think they all have to stick with it because if one or two breaks, then it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I think their goal was to have an advanced start time that was between 8 and 8.30. Right. Or something. They gave a range, I think, if I'm... If I'm I, you know, just from experience, I, I just think it would be more difficult getting home an hour later at night if you're playing sports or you're doing theater or whatever than it is would be getting up an hour earlier. I, you, might, you might be right, Jerry. I don't Jerry. know. I don't know. No, just, I understand. Yeah. I guess the, res the results, though, that I've I mean, heard, could be doctored, but they right. show improvement in academic performance in the schools that have done it. But, but you're, I mean, you, you're right. Your point is well taken on the getting out an hour later. Yeah, hour. I, I think we should look at it. Again, That's, I think, no the spirit commitment. of what, no, there is no, no commitment. commitment. No, no, I don't think, I don't think I'm speaking out of school, so to speak, but I'm I'm not, I. Right now, I'm not seeing like a Cape Ann League pact. I'm not seeing a climate for that with the group that I've met with. So, okay. but I would think with these <clears throat> three districts, somewhat moving forward, yeah, that could. There has to be something, you know, that has to be kind of discussed and determined on how yeah, they're going to. I don't, I don't know. There. They might try it for a couple of years and find out. That That's true, and it and just I, doesn't work. They could force the issue though, but mm. at some, it's if because three districts, but they're uh, not going to... You can't overlook the, the contract part of this either. Right, the contract... And there's, there's, there's potential for significant transportation right, right. costs. Right, right. Transportation you know, costs, yeah, so that's I mean, another issue. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's very, lot, very exploratory. Right. a lot of logistical issues. At this point. It's very, very exploratory. Very... Pre, very... Yeah, don't let them kid you. It's going in... At very the infant stage, Dan. <laughs> no, I, I agree. It's extremely exploratory. <laughs> it's a topic for All discussion. Right. Yes, yeah, topic for discussion. But do you agree that it's worth... Yeah. Further ex okay. Looking at it. Well, just push it at least. Consent. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> at least. <Jerry> does. <laughs> Let me rephrase the question. Um, wait, wait till he's off the board, and we'll talk about it. Again. You're not finished with your. Interview. I'm not finished. I have two more things quickly. Um, just again, trying to give you a little bit of an update. The North Reading Education Foundation. I don't want to lose sight of. That. I had a very good meeting with Eric Evans last um, Friday. Maureen Vaca, whom you all know, continues to be involved with trying to refile paperwork. Meeting with John Murphy. That, you know, again, we're looking to engage the community with some volunteers, Dan, to the extent that maybe you can promote that for me. Thank you. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say that we're in kind of a transition period right now with some people who had previously served on the foundation looking to retire and to get some new folks involved. Eric Evans, I'm not sure how many of you know Eric, Eric very active in Rotary, a financial planner in town. He's becoming back uh, friends of Hornet Productions, Batch Elder School PTO. He's a, a good guy that's really that's kind of looking to engage some people around, um, maybe breathing some new life into the to the Ed Foundation. So do we need a new board, or do we? Ultimately, that's what needs to happen. Yeah. So Eric would be part of that. I think what we're looking at is Eric. I think Maureen Vacher and John Murphy are looking to retire. Maureen's right. moving. John, I think, yeah. is just overwhelmed. Yeah. David Troughton was on, you right. know, he's retired now, yeah. although he has been corresponding through the emails too. But I think we're looking at, you know, potentially like an Eric Evans being president and, and trying to recruit. And I think we're very close to signing on to um, two folks to be a secretary and a treasurer. So would you so, have a three member board and then so I think the volunteers? And then like I would be like an advisory right. kind of ad, you know, non-voting member and then get some community volunteers to, to form the, the foundation. So it's, it's, I think we're, We've gotten very far along in just a short period of time, and I would expect that there could be some sort of an informational meeting for anybody that's in interested in joining it or learning more about it in, like, the November, ta December time frame at the latest. Okay. I just have a quick question on that. Sure. Is that something we can't be a part of? No. We right. as school Like, I, I actually did not want to be, like, a voting okay. member. I think I'm, I'm happy to help them and be, like, an advisory sure. capacity, but I don't think if money's going to be coming to the district through these so-called grants. Sure. Like, I should be voting on them. Okay. By law, okay. Okay. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. No, but yeah. I think that's so. I should should I not be a part of the Hood Parent Association then? No, I think I think that's different. <laughs> I think a Hood Parent Association okay, okay. is different than a. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a board member, Education. but see, uh, unless yeah, are they 501 three. Right, as long as you're on association, yeah. you're not an officer. I'm not a. I'm not an officer. You're not an officer. Oh, no, I was, right. but that's not. Yeah, that's different. You're not report you you wouldn't want that. Yeah. I know, huh? Yeah. Send that in right yeah. now, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Want to use my phone? Yeah. yeah. No, we yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. And the last item is. I think it's as long as you're not a board member. Okay. Yeah, that's what you don't want. Officer. And then just lastly, information, I think you may have gotten an email over the weekend from Irene Yule. So she, Irene Yule and the, and the North Reading Republican Town Committee is hosting an opiate um, crisis informational forum next Tuesday, October 18th at the, um, at the Moose Hall. She had asked me, Irene did back in, um, back in the summer, I think it was, it was, it was quite a while ago, if I would be willing to, 
to to be on the panel, and so I agreed that I that I would. So that's happening on uh, on Tuesday night at seven o'clock at the Moose Hall, and you see the um, handout <clears throat> attached here that Brad Jones. Um, Along with me, uh, Dr. Richard Falzone, a local adolescent and adult psychiatrist, uh, Frank Hughes from the state police, Car Carol DiGi and Tommaso is a former North Reading resident. She unfortunately lost her son, um, Michael, to, um, to a drug-related death and several years ago. I've met Carol on a number of occasions, very nice person. She, she's going to be on the panel as well as Dennis uh, Sullivan, whom I do not know, and, and the In Plain Sight program that Amy spoke about. Amy Luckowitz early tonight will also be in display, so you're all invited to attend if you wish, the community as well. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. No correspondence at this time. Future business, October 17th, town meeting at 6.30 on the superintendent's office, and won't have the whole town meeting there. We'll adjourn to the, to the, uh, to the uh, hall for the... Performing Arts Center? Meeting, yes. November 7th, uh, 6.30, regular town meeting in the, right here. And November 21st, regular meeting here. And December 12th, uh, regular meeting, a high school presentation Correct. here in the distance learning lab. So if I could just ask, and, and maybe it'll be covered by other stories, but to make sure that hopefully we can get some help from the transcript and aggressively publicizing the handicap access that we're going to be providing at a town meeting. I think it's already been in once, but since well, town meeting's coming up, yeah. where we're going to have the additional parking spaces out front for handicap access and also that the elevator will be working, et cetera. Okay. Something okay. something has been in once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was in. Okay. We okay. A reminder Thanks, would be helpful. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just very quickly, so just when we do have the meeting Monday night before, tell me, I will just have that continued business item on, oh, on the second end. reading on those two policies. Okay. okay, good. Thank you. All right. Uh, I guess I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. It's a motion, motion to adjourn. And second day. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You both made All those opposed? Great. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to get a vote to oppose motion. Oh. Oh.